Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Hewitt Channel. I'm Brian Hewitt, the man, and we bring you the love of the Lord through the whispers of the wind, for the pouring forth his love to the four corners of the world and the wind. And again, let me introduce myself. We are the Hewitt Channel. Again, Brian Hewitt, along with Anita Hewitt, and the man coming to you with God's colorful way of love, expressing his truth, expressing his love, and tonight we're going to speak of your justification in God. You, you are justified with the new life that God has given you. It is 6 p.m. here in the West Coast. And we are bringing you God's love in all languages, all times, His endless rhyme, giving us but God into the grace of eternity. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness the attitude of your gratitude. We bring you into this life and forevermore. We bring you into this time that God has always wanted to express his love, express his gratitude. And with this now, O Lord, we come forward. With this now, Lord, we thank you for all that you have given us and all that you shall give, give unto us for in the matchless name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, we love thee. And to those that are just joining us for the first time again, I'm Brian Tewitt. I share MCN Ministries Morning Star Communications Network with my wife, the brilliant and lovable evangelist, Anita Hewitt, with much healing power of the power of the living word of God that comes out of her mouth. And we are here to be ambassadors of the Lord, examples or teachers, we, our broadcast goes to those of the unchurched. We're based here in Los Angeles, and I come on at 6 a.m. My wife comes on at 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. And yours truly again joins us at 6 o'clock p.m. on the hour. And all, all our times I just shared with you are, of course, our Pacific Standard Time, West Coast of the United States, for those living in other countries who have no, no idea to what I'm speaking of. What I am speaking of tonight is that being justified by the new path that God has brought into your new life. And how do we do this? We are justified by everything that God gives us, especially a new heart. So our, our foundation scripture is found in Ezekiel 36, verse 26. And we ask whenever you come on this appointed time with myself and my wife, if you don't have a Bible, do bring a little scratch pad to take down some notes to go into um, your scriptures and your love and study them, please, with your friends and develop small groups um, at your time and God's time, please. Our foundation scripture, once again, is Ezekiel 36, 26. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. God is a faith God. He works into the realities of bringing you into a new life. With what we have learned from Father Abraham, from Romans chapter 4, verse 17, I'll start here. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Verse 21 and verse 21 of chapter 4 of Romans. And being fully persuaded that when he, what he had promised, he was able also to perform. God is bringing you the precious promises as he did to Abraham. The precious promises of having a new heart. The precious promises of saying, Blessed are those they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. That's from verse 7 of chapter 4. We go forward in the forgiveness that God has blessed us with. We go forward in this time that we have a changed heart. God has removed the stony edges of the old heart and placed that new heart. Let his heart be changed from man's and let a beast heart be given unto him. Let seven times pass over him. That's found in Daniel chapter 4 verse 16. 
We are sanctified by the truth. The word is truth. Our hearts are changed from the ways of man. We, our finger of God has touched us and blessed us with the ever so glorious path that God is presenting us and having us walk on. Not so much where our dreams wanted to guide us, but where God wants to place us, where God wants to reward us, where God wants to bring that sustaining power and His glory forever and ever. With a new heart, you are developing communication skills to stronger Christians, Christians, and knowing that inside of our instincts, we know there are wolves in sheep clothing. The stronger we get and move into God, the more of the attacks will, will be have. But with a new heart, we are justified by what? By faith. By faith. And God is a faith God, which means faith is the now, today, the moment, not yesterday. The new mercies in parts of the world that we cry upon, that we pray upon, your day is just starting. To some of us here in Pacific Standard Time, Eastern Standard Time of, the United, of North America, day is just ending. Let's take this quality time and be amongst our families, our friends, to be examples of this justification of the truth that God has blessed us with, with this new life. The new leadership that we now embrace our home as we have never embraced it before. Our home that we are building as one mind and one judgment of Christ. Our home that we are using as a launching pad to go outside the door into our neighbors' homes, developing small group Bible studies, going into the community, then developing a church and going on international crusades. As my wife and I were blessed by the introduction of the Lord Jesus Christ as perfect strangers and now as husband and wife seven months later we introduce you to your new life we want you to have every opportunity that God has blessed us with and to go forward in the matchless name of Jesus being justified by the faith blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin you are blessed you are moving forward into your new life. You have God's arms wrapped around you, not just when you come forward, not just when you pray, but God is with you all the time. But it is not, we are not justified by our sin. God has never rejected us. God has never turned his back to us. God has never lied to us. Nor has God ever fooled us. We move onward into this time. We move onward in the actualization. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Romans chapter 4 verse 13. By the righteousness of faith, the promises came true to Abraham, the father of faith. The promises of faith lie await for you to grasp, take hold, and go. What comes close to frustrate to me is a stumbling block pretty much every day, but I walk through it. Yes, my wife can share that with you some, some or afternoon. Is you're in a church for 35 years and then you're seeing pew and you have this being done and that being done and everything being done for you and around you. And what are we doing? Yes, you have your bus, bus ticket punched to heaven. But we are also justified by our faith, which is with faith without works is dead. We have to present our calls, enlarge the tent of our territories, move forward into the everlasting new life that God has led us to. And justification is made right in the eyes of God. For according to the pastures, so they were filled, and they were filled, and their heart was exalted. Therefore have they forgotten me. You don't want to move into your own pasture. You don't want to move into any pasture represented by the ways of sin. 
You don't want to borrow money from the ways of men and then expect God to pay for it. It just both the, the imbalances just pretty much disconnect themselves. Don't disconnect yourself from God. Justification of the law brings you a truth, and the truth will set you free, and it is the freedom of the blood of Calvary that is wrapped around you, embracing you, feeling you, giving you the, the heart that has re removed you from the pride of cancer. Remember, pride does not have humility, but faith does. And she is empty, and void, and waste, and the heart melteth, and the knees smite together, and much pain is in all the loins, and the faces of them of all gather blackness. That's from Nam chapter 2, verse 10. What darkness do you want to stay in? What light do you want to be a part of your life? you want to be a candle on the hillside and the mountain so all the world can see and be embraced by you? Come unto me, all! Lord Christ, come and be saved. Come into thy new life. Come into thy manner of the absolute truth. Lord, take me, love me, I am yours. I am justified by faith. I am justified by the blessings of your healing. You want to be healed? Be justified in your faith. Be sanctified. For the sanctification is now separating you from the ways of man. Let them have their justice. And that day is shortly coming. So in case you don't follow the news over the Twitters and the Facebooks and Yahoo News and the old media room of the newspaper headlines, on your morning cup of coffee. The world needs you. We got hedge funds betting on this collapse of the European Union, Greece, and also betting on the, for their success. They can't lose. They got notorious banking schemes taking one corporation down after another. And what confusion are we allowing in this world? But we can change that confusion. Or we can change our own world from where we are at the moment. We take hold of our community with prayer. We pray for our leaders. We pray for our president of the United States. We pray for Kenya, Africa, Nigeria, countries that we have been to, countries that we are going back to, England, Russia, Poland, China, Cape Town, South Africa, and, and the measurement of the new life. We have this new relationship with you and I and my wife. We're coming into your living rooms, your laptops, to your favorite internet cafes, and we're giving you this time to really learn. And this is a broadcast for the, the unchurched, those who don't have a typical, a typical church like we have here in the United States, who have their church intense we we'll have their church before laptops. We go to the Gypsy Nations in Pakistan with their programs educating Pakistan. We have our programs in educating Kenya and developing and growing, educating the children beyond the fifth grade. Cape Town, Nigeria, England. I works in Canada and I works here in Los Angeles. We need your prayers and support and we ask you to plant a financial seed for your own harvest to blossom. For your own harvest to grow and guide guide yourself into that new life. To guide you into the obedience of God's other offering. The obedience of truth. And to enjoy the fellowship of, of the new Christians, your new friends. And to, and to divorce those old friends that are stumbling blocks to you. The yoke of your past sin. The yoke that has been holding you back. And the yoke will set you free because the abundance love of God, the grace of God just sets you free. Matthew chapter 5 verse 8 Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Well how can I have a pure in heart when I've done this and I've done that? Lift up yourself daily to be of repentance. Lift up yourself daily in prayer the offerings, the tithes and God is going to bless you with that new heart. You're going to be covered as white as snow, as white as a coat 
of the wool of the lambs. And as God shed his blood for you, as God lived his life in the utmost humility for you, from the manger to the cross, and then the resurrection. The resurrection. Hallelujah! Bind the enemy! Take hold of him. Be of one accord with him. Come into this embrace. Come into this 